So uh, now we've come to the favorite part of the show that I like the most uh, about getting to know my uh, guests. So tell us about Jean. Who is Jean Stamberger? Where did she grow up? What did she want to do? And is she doing what she wanted to do all the time? Oh, <laughs> Nick, that's so much. Uh, so, so I was born in Illinois, uh, but I grew up in Geneva, Switzerland until I was nine. So my father worked for an American company, but, and so we lived overseas and I went to a British school, you know, with the children of bankers, ambassadors, diplomats. It was a very interesting childhood. I had a, a British accent as a small child. <laughs> and I, I later went to Oxford University as a college student um, and it came back, which my sisters teased me mercilessly about. Um, I was always interested in biology. I thought I fell into it. And my family's like, oh no, you liked bugs and mushrooms and always were trying things. And so I uh, I went to school. I took every biology class I could. I was taking graduate level biology classes because they were fun. You know, we got to go to University of Washington's Friday Harbor Lab and you know, we were studying algae, we were skinny dipping in blue green algae that would glow. We went to Australia and were documenting fish. It was an awesome time. So I went to graduate school um, after that and I started in marine biology and then I switched to alpine. So working in the mountains and it's not an unusual switch um, because you're looking at changes across space, right? So if you're looking at the edge of the ocean, you know, if you're at the bottom where the water is, that's really wet. And then as you go up the inner tidal, you get drier and drier and drier. It's a climb, they call it. And so I was doing the same thing in the mountains. As you go up in elevation, everything changes. So I loved it, um, and, but I didn't like the politics of academia. And I, I didn't, it was very, it's a solo approach, right? It really is, being a scientist is kind of an individual event. And things have changed, but I love my team at, at Alpha Zeta Management, and I love working with them. And I feel that we can do more together than an individual can do. When we hear about companies trying to do this in-house, I'm like, I don't know how you could do this in-house because I'm like, you know, I, you know, we have Karen who's amazing in advertising. We have Jen Garza who does shipments. We have Jenny who does this. Like, I don't know how a single person could do it. So anyway, but that's jumping ahead. So I, I left that and um, I ended up working as a, a biologist for a, a corporation that builds big buildings. They worked on the Panama Canal. So I worked for the on the Delta smelt. It's an endangered species in California. And we were building this awesome model about what happens if there's an earthquake, what happens if sea level rises and kind of combining how we build buildings with how we um, save fish and deliver water to Los Angeles. Then I got into disaster management because I build tools with the computer science department at Stanford University during my biology degree. We worked together. It was really fun because we were trying to take their tools out into the wild and ask them crazy questions like about museum specimens that you catch it, you know, and then you need to have that information be able to be documented and available for 100 years, maybe 300 years, maybe 500 years. And this is blowing the computer scientist's mind because to them, a computer program, a data storage that is six months old is kind of obsolete, you know. So this idea of like having to work on these unusual problems is really interesting. And a lot of it lent itself to disaster response. So I ended up working at Carnegie Mellon in Silicon Valley as a professor. And we were doing this great thing where we were getting together computer scientists and venture capitalists and researchers and the police and the firefighters all together to discuss how to make this better. And it was awesome. And that's kind of the beginning of like bringing these amazing talents together, trying to nurture them so that we, you know, can make something big. Um, and then uh, I, I got married and I had a child and my husband built spaceships. And so we moved to Colorado so he could build the Mars Insight rover. <laughs> and, and then, <laughs> but then I was like out of a job, you know, because I left, I, I was working at Aid in Africa. We had a $32 million USAID grant to improve resilience in Sub-Saharan Africa. And it was awesome, but I couldn't do it with small children and my husband working on spaceships. And so this is how I ended up in the position I had because my sister called me up and she's like, Jeannie, I make food. I need you to sell it on Amazon. Hey, you're smart. You do data. That was kind of what she said to me. You do data. And 
I worked for her and we quickly realized it made no sense to do this in-house because it required so much education. Just like you were saying, the only thing constant about Amazon is change. So we spun it off as a consulting firm and it's just been, it's just been fun. It's, we have this amazing team. Really, this is all about my team, not me, because they're so good. Um, and they just, uh, we get into problems. We've worked with clients for many years. We've helped them through CEO changes, packaging changes, you know, changes in venture capital funding, the pandemic. Um, and we help them through the whole thing and give them year over year growth. And it's just really fun. So sorry, I'm monologuing, Nick. Sorry. (laughs) Look at me go. Look, look, you know, there there is like, uh, two guys talking and one of them is telling the other a story and then and then this guy is listening and listening and listening i feel like that guy is like everything that he hears is like sounds unreal like how can one person do so much <laughs> my husband will build spaceship that does the mars rover and then i'm i'm working with this 32 billion dollar fund and then